right. So this isn't Dave's garage. This is Dave's kitchen. So let me aim that up a little bit higher. Let's see. It's like I think my head was slightly off. <laughs> Dude, stop. God, you're a whiny little bitch. Go like big, big mean pities. He just sits there whining. All right, so we're cleaning guns today. And we're going to show you how to do it safely. And this way later when you're like, hey, I forgot how to do the one. I'm like, watch the video on Dave's Garage. <laughs> so, uh, but hey, other people might get, like it, something that get hits. So. Yeah. Um, so, first thing, safety first. So take all the guns that you plan on cleaning. Unload them. Point them in a safe direction. At the floor, not at your foot. Drop the mag. Your finger should never be in the trigger guard, within the trigger guard. Unless you're at the range and pointing on target, so. It's on safety. Oh, safety, but it's also open, nothing in it. All right, so leave all the mags in the case. Don't need that. Revolvers I like, cause boop, hey, already unloaded and very easy to see. Check the cylinders, make sure there's nothing in there, no obstructions, you're good to go. What I like here is we have three different type of pistols, even though this one is, you have two semi-autos, this one takes down differently than that. This is a fixed barrel, that's a floating barrel. So, see a variety of stuff here. What you're gonna need, old toothbrushes. Don't use your wife's toothbrush. Or as a gag, maybe, to brush your teeth. Why are my teeth black? So, old toothbrushes, when you get ready to throw them out, save them, they're perfect for doing this. You'll need a bore brush, I've also got a cheap uh, gun cleaning kit from Amazon, so we got brushes, we got um, bronze or copper, don't know which, uh, bore brushes and stuff like that, so we got carbon in there. You got a little dental pick, and if you need any dental work when we're done, uh, I have a minor in that, <laughs> in dentistry. <laughs> so you get all this stuff, get yourself some gun oil, there's a combination of a really light oil. Um, I use this, I don't know, I just got it on the shelf at Walmart. It's G96 brand gun oil. It's a cleaner, light oil, um, helps break up the carbon, loosen it. Get yourself some cleaning patches, paper towels. I've also got some a heavier duty oil. This is synthetic motorcycle oil. This is what I use on my bike. I figure if it's good in a cylinder, uh, in a motorcycle that's going 16,000 RPMs at 100 degrees, you know, it's gonna hold up in a gun just fine. And then I've got this one that's got the little applicator. I think I got this with one of my Boker knives. And then um, that's good for putting oil down in a place that's hard to reach. Get yourself a couple rags. Have a dirty rag, have the clean rag. When you're done and you have a little bit of light oil film and you wanna just light wipe the oil away, this is used for wiping stuff down and keeping it clean. Don't use the one that you use to wipe grime and dirt off because then later you'll put the dirt back on or you might get little bits of metal and you'll scratch up the finish. So have a separate dirty and clean rag. Sounds more complicated than it is. You can get a kit like this off Amazon and oil and everything for like $30 all in, cleaning patches and everything. So we'll start with the easiest one. First one, revolvers. Good news about revolvers, easy to clean. I mean, you literally just take a brush and just get any carbon out of there. If you've got a blued finish, don't use the, um, the, bris the metal bristles if you can help it. Um, that will help wear into the finish. It won't hurt the gun, but cosmetically it won't look as good. Kind of just go around it, make sure there's no carbon on it, and basically you're going to take your bore brush and clean out the barrel, run it up and down a couple times. Now, you can go down with the cleaning patches and stuff like that. We'll do that here for illustrative purposes. Most of the time, I mean, until you've got like several hundred rounds through it, you don't tend to get a lot caked up in there. I also never shoot lead ammo. It's always copper jacketed and that way you don't get the lead the copper's harder it doesn't really leave much metal behind in the rifling the lead will so and that's when you got to get the lead solvent and you got to use the metal bristles and, and all that stuff so I will just go down each of the cylinders several times just to any carbon build up in there it's going to be towards the other end from setting off around max I'm gonna shock you in a minute if you don't stop. It's like having toddlers around. Toddlers with giant jaws and teeth. Honestly, that's all you really gotta do. What I will do is take 
a pour brush. Um, let's see. I always end up stabbing myself in the little metal tines. Uh, that's for the large. So what we're going to do, and the good news here is you got a 38, a 380, and a 9 millimeter. So you can use the same bore brush on every one. They're all the same diameter. So I will run the metal one down a couple times, just in case there is anything in there. I'm OCD, so I have to do it in increments of 5 or 10. I don't know why. Do that, and then we're going to take cleaning patch. On a 380, on a 22, you'll use a single patch. On bigger calibers, you'll take two, fold it in half, pull it true. And the first pass, we're going to put a little bit of oil. Woo! Didn't mean to drop that much. Soak in for a second. We're gonna go down it a couple times. Loosen up any carbon. And then we're gonna go down it with a dry patch and get off any excess. Now, I will also sometimes, just as long as I'm here, run this down each of those. It'll just leave a real thin film of oil, pick up any extra carbon that I might have Missed with the bristle brush. And that little just thin film of oil, it it'll it makes it just that little bit harder for the carbon to to cling to it. So it, it, it might it'll make it just easier to clean the next time around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't want the thing, you know, dripping with oil. Alright, so let's take this. This is a larger patch, so I'm not doubling it up. I'm gonna quadruple fold it. And now we're just going to run this dry one down it and make sure it comes out, you know, pretty clean. Yeah. You know, if the guys are doing like super precision sniping, that kind of stuff, they may be much more meticulous and have a different process. We're talking about a close range carry gun. It's it's nothing that's going to impact accuracy here. It's just making sure the gun's clean, clear of obstruction, so nothing jams the mechanism, and that it's going to be functioning properly. That's about all I'm concerned with. Can I hit a target at close range if I had to deploy this in a defensive way? And at that point, safe direction, no bullets. Make sure it functions properly. And then I will just set that one aside. That's basically done. Now the next one, we've got the Canic, Canique. Oh no, this is the SAR. Sorry. I was thinking of the Canic here. So did you change the, uh, you did change the side plates. Uh, I tried to, but you see how I wasn't able to really get them. I wasn't able to get the back one off. Yeah, you got to And then the I back. tried to put the side ones on and I couldn't get them in all the way. Yeah, you got to get the side of the back one off first because yeah. they'll slide in the slot. So you got to knock them out with a punch. Yeah, so I kind of messed it all up there. All right. Uh, well, I tried, but okay. didn't have very good luck. Tell the camera something about yourself, Nick, while I go get a punch. What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to this uh, Dave's Garage episode on how to clean the guns. And, you know, uh, Dave's a good friend of mine. We met riding motorcycles, of course, you know, watching his channel. He's a huge time motorcycle guy. So Dave is an awesome dude and um, yeah, helping me clean some guns. And uh, so maybe I'll, I'll learn how to do it properly. Right. Get yourself a punch. I tried to do it with the one that was in the box, but it didn't work. It's really hard to get it out. Yeah, I need a little bit of a... A hammer? Yeah. Um, a garage? Yeah, grab, grab a, if you can in the garage, look for a roll of duct tape or masking tape okay. over on my uh, the red toolbox. Okay. And then down below in one of the larger drawers in the bottom will be a hammer. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this down while he's doing that. So the process on this one is A, again, double check, triple check. Make sure that that weapon is clear. No round in the chamber, nothing in the gun. Magazine is out. 
and this takes down very similar to a Glock. It's got takedown pins here. Actually, I'll wait for Nick so he can see that. Perfect. So it's going over clearing the weapon. And then what you want to do is drop that. Mm -hmm. These little levers here are very similar to a Glock. So you pull it back slightly, move that down, dry fire it, and that's why you have oh, double okay. triple check to make sure it's clear. So put it, pull it up slightly, then press that down. These things down. Pull it up, pull it up slightly, press yep. that down, fire. Yeah. yeah. And After you double it. triple check, make sure everything's clear. Right. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna knock those pins out. So go ahead and put that. Knock yeah. the pin out, and we're gonna pull this out. Nice. And now those will. Yeah, but those are not the right size. Where are the right size? In there. In the box. Yeah, yeah. I All wanted right. to switch them out. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of that while we're here. So which ones did you want to use? Uh, there was a bigger. I wanted to use the. Was it the they should have like an S and M or. This is small left, small right. Okay. So you're gonna go the mediums? Yeah. Medium left, medium right. All right, those just slide in there. Yeah, you chewed that up I a little chewed bit. it up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, chewed up that slot. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was, it was so I should have waited. Yup. That one is in okay. Yeah, you nicked up the plastic there, trying to pry that out. Yeah, I did. What kind of pocket knife do you carry? Um, I don't carry a pocket knife. I just have a big old knife in my car. I need a little pocket knife. No. Bet, thank you. That's, not, that's nice. I guess it's got a double locking mechanism on I guess, it. I guess so. some cash I can throw you. Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. So it's uh there's a that. Uh huh. And then that. It's called oh, a, a cool. locks double system. Lock. Yeah, so it's a double lock. So you, right. if you're moving your finger, you can't accidentally unlock it. Perfect. So it's a, pull that down, push then that down. over. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Cool. All right. So let me see it again because i got to dig out a little okay. bit of plastic in that channel. All right. So it's Dave's gunsmithing and repair. You, <laughs> you see how I made a hole there? Dude. Come on, man. you got to be careful with that. Cause if, here's, but that's not going to damage anything right there. Cause that's where the that's where the this goes that's where the magazine goes in and uh, yes but here's the thing you got to be careful of because if you damage the handle if in some way if you did damage it it's not like some of the new sigs some of the guns you can replace, uh, it. You can replace the handle that is the firearm that's the serial yeah. numbered piece so you can't just replace that you got to right. buy the whole you know you got to buy if you buy another grip you got to go through the paperwork and you got to buy it as if it was a full firearm right so. When in doubt, dude, be patient. Yeah, call me or go on to the YouTubes. Yeah, and and it would show you walk through that. So there's just that little bit of plastic that's in that channel, not allowing it to seat all the way. It isn't going to go anywhere. I just want it to sit completely flush yeah. if I can get it. Yeah. And oh, that little piece. Yeah, it's like where is it catching? The bottom, maybe? No, the top. See if that pushes it more into place. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. It just, it just, yeah. it's not flush yeah, like that. No big deal. No. All right. And then the try. The, I wanted to see if I was going to use a different grip. I can't imagine with your size hand you're going to want no. bigger. But you can take you can take pack, pop the back one off and put that one on if you want. Oh, just like that. try that one, yeah. See, is that large? This yeah. is the largest one. That's the medium. 
That feels a little bulky to me, but it's personal preference. I mean, it's up to you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the medium. Just the medium. Yeah. That feels better. Here you do it. Boom. Pop it in. Cool. Good. And then you just take your punch, and we're just going to drive that pin back in. Make sure it's not sticking out the other side. All right, so now we're back on track. So we got that adjusted, got that put back in properly. So on a semi-auto, this is going to go for a Glock. I mean, if you had a Breda 92, it's going to take down a little differently, but essentially you're going to get it out. You're going to take out your recoil spring. This is captive. Captive meaning it's capped on both ends. Some of them are not. It'll be capped. It'll have the, 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 the flange on one end for the spring to catch. And then when you pull it out, if you let go, it's going to go and shoot across the freaking room or hit you in the eye. Like seriously. So what you want to do is definitely... Um, check and see what your gun has, if it's captive or not. At that point, come in, wipe out the inside really well. The area you're going to want to scrub with your bristle brush is that face with a firing pin, your extractor, all that stuff. Just come in here, make sure there's no crud. The groove that the frame rails ride inside, go down it with the brush, make sure all that crud is out. Basically, just scrub out the carbon. Make sure there's no bits of stuff, little bits of lead, little bits of brass or something from a piece of case that flaked off. You don't want any little bits of metal in there that could bind or uh, in any way, um, you know, cause a malfunction or a jam or something to catch or something like that. Just wipe this down. There's really not much to clean on here. I mean, you can run the bristle brush over it if you want just to get off any excess carbon. And then go here and do the same for the frame. Wipe it down first, get as much crud off as you can with a paper towel or a rag. And then just go over all these little bits and little nooks and crannies. Make sure that there's no carbon in there. Bits of fuzz, anything. And you do this when you're carry gun, you know, like if you're carrying after like a month or two, you may not have shot the gun. You have bits of pocket lint. You'll be surprised. It'll be if you're carrying it under your untucked shirt, little bits of flicks of deodorant and stuff that falls off the powder, you know, from speed stick. You get all kinds of crud in your gun. Take it apart once in a while. Unload it. Make sure it's clear. And just give it a once over. Clean it. Reoil it. You won't have to clean out the inside of the barrel and stuff if you're not shooting it. So those are all cleaned. Wipe down the barrel. And get your, where'd that bristle brush go? I had a bronze. Is it back in here? This one? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead, take our bristles. Five times. Good. If you got the double wide like this one, fold it into fourths, feed it through, a little bit of Earl, thinner stuff. Because this is like an oil, it'll lubricate, but it's, it's more solvent, it, it's kind of in between. Running up and down a few times. See how it's coming out each time a little dirtier. Mm -hmm. Clean out the chamber. Put that aside. Grab a clean one. Fold it over into fourths again. Run that one through dry. Get any of the excess oil off, any little bits of dirt. 
Some people are super OCD. They want it to come out as clean, like not even a speck. Again, you do what you're comfortable with. I'm co it's coming out pretty damn clean. There's really no dirt. There's no debris in there. There's a really thin sheen. The bore, everything's just nice and shiny. It's clear. All right, now we reassemble. I will usually take, just because you'll see there's wear marks on the barrel here, I'll take a couple drops of oil and just lightly smear it around the whole barrel. Just leave a really thin sheen. Same thing on the feed ramp. And then all you're gonna do is put it back together. Drop that in, locks into place. Take your recoil uh, guide rod, and that goes in the front, and then it goes into a little shelf right there. And now, drop oil. Look, what you can do is you can look for the rub marks. So you can see where the friction is and there's metal on metal action. So put a drop or two there, a drop there, and then you're gonna wanna put a good drop there, down in that, down in that rail. And actually, it'll make it easier if you don't have the recoil spring in there. You can put a drop up here. So you wanna get oil in there, let it sit for a minute. All right, set that down. Go back over here, make sure everything looks good, no more dirt. And on the metal pieces that are gonna contact that, I just put another drop of oil. And after you shoot the gun more and more, you'll see where it rubs and where the friction is. And that's where you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of oil. Don't overdo it. I mean, it's not gonna hurt it, but you don't want oil all over the place. And at this point, slide it back on, lock the slide back. Gun's still clear, magazines are over there. Make sure it catches, doesn't come off. And at that point, dry fire. Let the trigger reset, dry fire again. You're good to go. So we'll take that, lock the slide back so we know that that one's been done and it's clear and not loaded, obviously. Again, safety, safety, safety. What do you use to lock it, this thing? No. Slide lock right here. Oh, so, the slide lock. So yeah. you push it back all the way, push that up. Up. Yep. No. Sweet. When you're when your magazine, when you have an empty magazine in there, it pushes it from the inside. Right. So it would normally lock back on its own when you get to the empty mag. All right. So now we got the Bursa Thunder 380. Now this one takes down a little differently. This is very similar to a Walther PPK. Love these little guns. Nice to shoot too. Very fun to shoot. So it's got a decocker, it's double and single action, and it has a fixed barrel, so it's very accurate. On this gun, we're going to lock the slide back. I gotta remember this, and then there's a lever up here. So we're gonna push that lever forward and hold it forward with our finger, and this comes back and out, and then comes off the front. So you 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 pull it back and then lift it off because lift the barrel off. stays here. You can take right. that spring off. Um, it's attached to the gun. And, it, and the rail is back here. So once it's all the way back, you just pull it that little bit further and lift it off and then Push slide it, it all forward. the way forward. And so this is actually easier to clean. You don't have the extra pieces. The recoil spring is right here. It's it's actually quite nice. Once Some people struggle trying to get it back on off and off and getting the right angle. Because if you put it too much of an angle, then it binds you know that going mm -hmm. through the hole. So, you know, I haven't taken one of these parts in probably like six years. So I'm surprised I got it on the first turn. And same thing, clean out the channel, clean out that face there that where the extractor, the bullet, the, the back of the case rests against. Is that the breech? No, no, forget the terminology, but clean this all out. Make sure that there's no dirt crud. And again, you can see those wear marks, so you know where to lubricate it. So when you see the little bit of finish getting shiny there, because it's all black coated in this case, Wipe off any excess oil and take your brush. Go around. Make sure nothing's loose, falling out of place. Looks good. They should look good. They're basically brand new guns. So. 
All right, so now go back, repeat the process with the bore. Yeah, and that's why these are inherently accurate because this barrel is mounted very securely to the frame and pinned in place. So with those other barrels, there is a little bit of wiggle room. They lock into place when it, the locking lugs engage it, but the barrel can always wiggle a little bit. And that's why things like revolvers, again, fixed barrel, um, but you hear that moving around? Nothing here. So, All right, so bore brush through it a couple times. Take that off. Go back to this. We have two patches, one we're gonna oil, one that's gonna be dry. Go ahead, fold it over. Yeah, if you have too much, like on a 22, you'd have to cut these in half. The, the barrel's just not big enough to have that much cloth going down it. But it's gotta be big enough that it presses against the walls of the larger barrel. You know, on a 45, it'll be just a little bit looser. So. Let's soak in for a second. And run it through. See, that's, each time it comes through, it's grabbing a little more because the solvent goes in and it starts to just to eat away and loosen it just a little bit. So I'll run it through there like five or six times, swirl it around. Make sure that it, uh, the rifling only goes up to like there, and then there's the, the cylinder, it's, or not the cylinder, the um, chamber itself, which is just a slightly wider diameter for the case. So I'll twirl it around in there, make sure that we loosen up any gunk, any dirt that managed to get its way in there. So that came out fairly dirty. Mm -hmm. Well, I put about, a, I think I put about 200 rounds through it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. For 170. Any malfunctions, anything? Everything? Uh, the only issue I've had is ejecting ejecting so i had um one time where what kind after of ammo, i shot what ammo was it was it the range ammo like range ammo yeah so it was um it got stuck coming out um one time okay and i had to you know dislodge it and then any time that i'm having like with this with the saw you know i've got one in the chamber if i pop it it just it just shoots it right out Right. Okay. If I have one in the chamber, if I just want to get it out of there, okay. like a not a shot one, but you know, like okay. just to dischamber it, mm -hmm. it will just pop itself out. You know, when I cock it back. With this one, I'll pop it back and it'll get stuck, and then I'll have to like mm -hmm. pop back again and kind of just like shake it and get it out of there. How often does that happen? Is it only with the range ammo? It's, I haven't shot the other ammo yet. Okay. I haven't, you know, so it happened twice. Um, in 200 rounds. If you're going to have little more functions like that, so a gun has to break in. There's little burrs, yes. metals. You know, it's yeah. got to smooth out, kind of relax, um, things like that. And then, um, but it also could have been user error as well. Well, that's the other thing. So especially with smaller pistols, there's what's uh, called limp wristing. So the way that a pistol is is going to work um, is that when that bullet goes off, it's the case's face is, is pushed up against this. Mm -hmm. That inertia, that an object at rest wants to stay at rest, what's being accelerated by pressure pushing against the uh, the bullet, it pushes back. That's your recoil. The recoil is what throws this back, mm -hmm. and the ejector clicks it out. So it needs all that energy um, to do that. And the, the, it's, it's tuned a certain way with a specific weight spring to facilitate that. You can get what's called limp wristing, where... You're not you're you're not holding it tight enough, and instead of your hand being rigid and it has nowhere to go, so the slide comes flying back. If your hand moves back, then the slide isn't having to go back as much. You're eating up some of that energy that should be transferred into the slide. You're allowing it to transfer into your hand, and you're you're taking the recoil like this. Mm. So some guns can be more susceptible to that. So I would just change your grip, make sure that you're on target. You don't want to be like tense and right. anticipating and pushing down. Right. But you don't want to, to just kind of loosely let it go. Uh, Too much. Do that. Yeah. I can do that with a Glock. Like Glocks yeah. never jam. You can make a jo you can make a Glock jam. Yeah. So that's the only. It, other than that, it shoots wonderfully. Uh, it's a great gun. I really like it. Um, just ejecting the. And how many times did it happen in 200 rounds? Just twice. Okay. Yeah, yes. one time when it happened with me shooting at the range where it was it didn't inject all the way and got stuck and mm -hmm. I had to do it manually. Uh, and then the other time was just me trying to get the bullet out of the chamber 
and it would it would jam. Yeah, and it, that could be user error, you know. Yeah, it, it often is. I mean, it doesn't always have to be, but it usually, I mean, on a new gun, yeah, you had two jams, one while firing, and one was you, and and so so thing is when you pull it back. You may not be pulling it back as snappy and as hard as right. when it's going boom. Going boom. So exactly. technically, there might have been really just one, one failure to eject, and it's like it's anybody's guess. It could be just yeah. a new tight gun. It could yeah. be exactly uh, no issues with the SAR or of course the revolver. <laughs> yeah, and um, the SAR. I mean, every time I pull it back, it, it throws that throws that thing I love right the SAR. out of there. It's such a smooth shooting. Nice it thing. really is. It really is really fun to shoot. All right, so now put a couple drops of oil on the rail. We've cleaned everything out. Everything looks nice and good. Now to get this one back on, and you got to keep it up because if you let go of this, you'll throw this, you'll sling the slide across the room. But what we're doing here is doing that. Mm -hmm. Get it all, all the way, way back down. and push that forward, and that'll let that come down. See, it's kind of up here. Right. It'll go down, and now it's engaged in the rails, and now it won't go anywhere. But you nice. can't pick it up off unless you're pulling it pulling back. Pulling down. And you push that with your finger, and then, and then it'll let it. you lift it up. Gotcha. So now at this point, gun's unloaded. No magazine. Trigger reset. You're good to go? So you pull it up, pull it first, then you do the trigger reset. Well, I mean, you could do... What are you doing? What are you talking about? Reset. When you're resetting the trigger. Oh, I was just setting it... Yes, so I'm just checking the trigger. It'll normally reset on its on own. So boom, okay. it does that. But if you held the trigger and you wanted a short reset. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I'm just checking in all conditions just to yeah, make sure, yeah, make sure it's doing all what it's the, supposed to. Yeah, making sure every component works. Wipe it down. All right. We're good. Would have been better if we were at a table. I just realized a couple times it was getting close to aiming towards you, even though it's unloaded and it's, yeah. But so having you sit next yeah, to me, you're yeah. almost in front of me, and from that camera <laughs> angle, it's probably looking like I'm flashing you with the gun. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's um, awesome. Thank you, Dave. It's very easy to, to clean guns. And then when you're done, just throw all this stuff out. And that's pretty much it. Like, subscribe. And oh yeah, this, that. And give this man uh, all the views. So yeah, I figured that would help some people. I figured I had to do it for you anyway. I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I get like weird, it's weird things that like the channel like that people respond to. There's things where I'm like, oh, this is gonna get hits, and it gets 37 hits, and I'm like, yeah. what the hell? And then something else that I'm just like, oh, I was bored. I was like, oh, I had this. I'll just throw it up there. All of a sudden, that has 10,000. Like, yeah. It's like there's like no rhyme or reason. Like apparently, I can't read my audience. I don't know what <laughs> what's gonna be good or what isn't. So these little kits, I'll see if I can find the link on Amazon. Amazon. It's just a basic kit. Perfect. You can pick them up at Walmart. You can pick yeah. them up anywhere Yeah. Uh, for those. Good one. And then this was like a bottle of SIG oil that came mm -hmm. with one of my SIGs. I just started refilling it with uh, Mobile One. Yeah. Motorcycle Earl. Thanks, Max, for actually being quiet most of the damn video. <laughs> Someone check. Put a mirror in front of him. See if he's still breathing. He's sleeping. Yeah, I got, I got these in here. Yeah, those look like spear gold dots or something like that. The bullets, the, for the so. nine. Yeah. Yeah, those will work. Oh, and I got me one of those um, quick loaders. The yeah. Magula? Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple of those. It's so easy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Because right now, like, this has 17. It's so hard to put this back yeah. in there, you know? It's a bitch. Yeah, the Magula is a really good... That guy's got to be making money because what's it cost? $2 to make them and they sell them for 30 30 yeah. Actually, so, seven dollars. Yeah, worth every penny though. Yeah, worth every penny. I mean, this is a pain in the ass to try to get get this last last round in. I'm not even gonna try. Yeah. It's so hard. My thumb like breaking. Mhm. Mm yeah, it is not easy. It's the seventeenth round. That's why I went ahead and spent that thirty-seven dollars. Yeah. What you can do. Is chamber around and then oh, put, and then put one put, back in. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I always carry with them chambered. But yeah, I, until uh, you've got maybe more experience, you're yeah, just more used to it. You know, do what you're doing now. Right, I keep it. I keep it uh, not chambered. Well, thank you so much, Dave. All right, everybody oh. from Dave's Kitchen. We'll uh, we'll see you guys later.